All right, so the solution to the ladder problem, I have gone ahead and kind of done it, uh, but I'll run you through how we would do it uh, yourself. And I want you to, again, do it yourself because that is how you will learn. So the one, the one thing I've done that um, is very obvious here is that I have already right-clicked it uh, and save branched as seen, and I've saved it here in my objects folder. You can already see. So that way over here, uh, I now have my area 3D as the parent. So if you don't remember how to kind of reparent something, uh, you can kind of just make scene root. Uh, so this is my what you might have had before, but I did this where I made the area 3D as the scene root. And then inside of the script, let's take a look at the code here. You will notice it is very, very similar to the lever, right? So the lever code is almost the same. The idea behind this is that we're just checking to see if both players are inside of this area 3D before we go on to the next scene. So the lever is using the exact same code, but the only difference here is that once both players are in the range, we'll just enter to the next scene. Uh, and that's it. So that is how we go on to the next level. Uh, now, the only other option that you could do or it's not the only other option, but another option you could have done is you could have player count as an int and then say zero and then add to it every time you enter. Uh, there's a lot of solutions and a lot of ways to get around doing things like this. Um, so be creative on how you write your code and hopefully you try this challenge uh, before looking at my solution. And yeah, uh, so that concludes the ladder. So let's take a look at what's next. All right, so welcome back to the last part. You have made it. We have almost completed our video game here. So this part is going to be super simple. It's just a bit of polish and uh, adding some tutorial signs. So the first thing we're going to do, if you recall, we had this static body and we've kind of left it here, but we're going to actually use it. And you may be wondering for what? Well, if you recall from way back when, uh, and it is kind of hard to replicate now, uh, but from <laughs> way back when, uh, we were able to kind of slide off if we were kind of jumping on top of each other and stuff uh, a little too much. Uh, and it's not really showing as much anymore, but that is still a possibility of happening. Uh, and a quick fix to this, and honestly not a bad one, is to just, whoops, I'm going to lock. This is actually going to be a, a little trick here for you guys who made it to the last episode. I'm going to select all these boxes and I don't want to ever select them again. So I'm going to lock them. So now that they're all locked, uh, I can never really select them by accident. So now when I try to select the collision shape, it won't really do anything. Uh, so yeah, that's it. And now let's just take this guy and drag it up and make sure that it's not really in the way of us playing the game. So I'm going to turn off the lock and make sure that it is kind of perfect here. And now as a kind of fun little fun fact, I guess, uh, if you actually duplicate the collision bit box here, you can just move that forward. Uh, but do keep in mind that when you select this or change this, it actually changes the other one as well. Uh, now, it should change it the same amount. I'm not sure why it's not changing the same amount. That's kind of odd. Uh, but normally it would. Uh, oh, I see. It is changing kind of the same amount, but the other one's kind of going in both directions. I've actually never seen that before, so that is interesting. But yeah, that's it. So now we won't really have that risk of sliding off our, our screen, right? So it is almost like a test subject thing where our player can't slide off. Uh, and that's it. Um, if you would really, really like, uh, and I do actually think I did this in my version, uh, I made these collision boxes a little bigger. Uh, I adjusted them until I was really, really happy with them. Uh, and I made sure that they didn't slide and didn't have any bugs in them. Uh, but that's it. So that is the polish of that. Now the last part is the text. Now this is super easy. All we need to do is add a label 3D with our text. We can say, uh, come here to exit this level. And we can pop this like that. And if we move this, we will see text, uh, but we'll see that it is incredibly tiny. Uh, so that's not really what I want. And also, when I move my camera, you can see it doesn't really rotate towards my camera. Uh, if I hit play, we might see it. Uh, it is very small. So even if we increased it, so we could do that. Let's do it to 68 maybe. Okay, that's great. We'll see. It is kind of visible, uh, but this is something that you should do anyways. 
uh, because if I move my camera, I need to be able to see it regardless. Uh, and that will be something called billboard. So uh, if we actually search it up, it might not actually show up. So we'll go to flags here and go to billboard. Uh, and we can say either Y or enabled, uh, but we mostly just need the Y enabled. Uh, we don't really care about the upside. So I think enabled should just have it any rotation, uh, but we don't care about that in this game. We care more about the Y rotation of it. Uh, so yeah, there we go. We now have it rotating wherever the camera is. So this will work no matter where you are. Um, so you can see it didn't really change much. Uh, but yeah, again, if your camera is over here for any reason, you will see the text. Uh, so I like to kind of adjust this a little bit more. If we go to the text, we can give it an outline size. Um, just make it look prettier, essentially. Maybe we can increase it just a little bit. That might be a little bit too much. Maybe we can increase that and then maybe this a bit more. Yeah, I think that's not bad. Uh, and we can take a look at other stuff if you like, either uppercase or whatever. Um, definitely look around and see what kind of settings there are. But this looks pretty solid, so we just go up there to finish the level. And there we go. Awesome, we did it. Um, so that is definitely, that is pretty much it. We have a solid game here, guys. Uh, good work for reaching the final episode, the final part of this series. Um, I believe it was about eight episodes long, nine episodes, uh, depending on how much I cut down in edi editing and stuff. Uh, but good work. I'm really proud of you guys. Uh, for getting it this far. Um, if you guys want a more polished version of this game, um, I will probably put the template up on my website on codingquest.com. So go check it out if you would like. Um, I may complete a course uh, on polishing the game as well uh, and the thought process behind, hey, like how do we actually make this fun? Because right now we can run around and stuff, but like I want to do stuff, right? I want to make this like quote unquote more fun. Uh, so what do we do, right? Um, immediately, we can actually see a bug uh, that I kind of just did made on you guys. Uh, the box was stuck. So let's actually move those away a little bit. And now the box will fall. There we go. Um, but yeah, that is it. So uh, definitely check out my courses on my website. Uh, I have more coming soon. A lot of the ones on there right now are a little outdated. I will admit I do need to update a lot of them. Um, so I will spend a bit of time updating them soon. Um, I am working on my game called Soulforge right now, if you guys would like to check that out. Uh, it's on Steam to wishlist at the moment. Uh, maybe in the future, if you guys are watching this, maybe a year from now, the game might be out. So check it out on Steam. Uh, it's kind of like a Souls-like dungeon crawler, um, and I'm pouring my heart out into it. So go check it out, please. And I will see you guys in the next episode.